how you doing? What day is it? <laughs> it's uh, Thursday. <laughs> Took me a second. Goodness. I know it's Thursday because it's been a minute since we've seen each other, right? We haven't seen each other since Tuesday. And I actually had to go to the dentist yesterday. I tried to get some of you to go to the dentist for me and you just wouldn't do it. Jeez. Gosh. Feel the knife in my back, you guys. <laughs> it actually turns out none of you like to go to the dentist either, so it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. I was I um I I was definitely not alone in my um my desire to not go, but I made it. I survived. I'm here to uh, live another day, right? It wasn't that bad, but I have to go back in March. Ugh. Hi Anita. Hi Janice. Hi Vicky. Hi Tina. So glad to see everybody coming on in. How's everybody's week so far? Some of you actually went to the dentist yesterday. <laughs> Not for me, mind you, but you did go to the dentist. I noticed that yesterday. That was funny. So uh, I guess Wednesday is like dentist day. I don't know. <laughs> did you survive your dentist trip? I survived mine, but man, my teeth are sore now. You know, like, I don't know my hygienist. She's like really rough with her um, dental floss. It's like my gums are sore today. Hi, hi, good morning. Hi, Karen. Hi, Patty. Snowing. Oh, it stopped snowing in South Jersey. It's just rainy and gross here. It is really, really nasty weather here today. Um, I I even slept late because it was raining so hard and it was just like, oh, I can't get out of bed. <laughs> hi, hi. How are you guys doing? All right, guys. So <clears throat> I got to mention something just because it's been on my mind because this just like this just happened. <laughs> Not everybody is here yet, and that's okay. It's probably for the best because I'm going to reveal to you a very human moment of mine. <laughs> so I, you guys, I try to be very, very professional, but um, I, I have very unprofessional moments. <laughs> and I had one of these very unprofessional moments earlier today. So somebody posted, um, not from our group, obviously, Somebody posted on um, a YouTube video from like, I think it was, I don't think it was this past Feel Good Friday, but I think it was the one before that. And they had posted under YouTube, they were like, um, I wish that she would just stop blathering and get to the tutorial. And I took a second and I was like, you know, <laughs> first of all, I'm sorry that you're grumpy. Second of all, you clearly don't belong to our community, which I'm also sorry for because if you belong to our community, you would know that we do a lot of blathering and chit chatting because we are a connected community and we enjoy each other's company. And third, you're just rude. <laughs> and I went with the third choice. And I responded and told this person, you know what, you're rude. And I used a colorful word and it was very unprofessional of me. But you know what, sometimes those things just rub me the wrong way. And um, I, I had a very human moment. So I let them know, like, I'm a sparkly person, but I can also be a snarkly person. Um, if you rub me the wrong way and you catch me at the wrong moment. <laughs> This person caught me at the wrong moment. I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> so um, to that person, if you happen to come back and watch another video, I told all my friends. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Well, I did tell all my friends. That's not really a joke, but you know, you don't have to be rude. You don't have to be rude. Plus the fact that when you're over on Facebook, you can always fast forward through all of the blather and chit chat that we do. But you know what? I'm not going to apologize for chit chatting and blathering with my community um, because, you know, first of all, we're on Facebook Live. It takes a few minutes for everybody to catch up. It takes a few minutes for everybody to get the notification and to come in. So we've got a five minute buffer there where, you know what, I'm going to fill up that five minutes with chit chat and blather. And if you don't like it, you can fast forward because you're on YouTube. All I'm saying, all I'm saying. Right, it makes my day better better too. I like the chatting. It makes me feel connected with you guys. I will never ever apologize for 
being connected and building a strong community in a family and you know lasting friendships with you guys ever and if somebody doesn't like that that's okay that's okay um they can you know they can take a seat <laughs> so i guess just take a seat take a seat so how's everybody doing we've got our um i know <laughs> we find out a lot of good info during the blathering i agree um, so how's everybody's week been going so far? Mine's been going pretty good minus the dentist, which I survived. Like I said, it was, um, it was pretty uneventful. I do have to go back and it's a whole thing, but I didn't have any cavities, which is nice. <laughs> I don't, I usually don't have cavities, which is a good thing. So anyway, um, today's project, because we are here at the Thursday mark, we are doing kind of a throwback. That's normally what, um, Thursday. <laughs> you like my butt? <laughs> oh my goodness, Colleen. Um, <laughs> so we're doing a throwback only in the sense that I've, I kind of do um, jewel loom projects all the time. Yeah, Sharon, somebody complained. <laughs> they complained, but it's okay. They're just grumpy. They're just grumpy, right? We forgive them, sort of, after we use an explicative and anyway. <laughs> You'll have to rewind. <laughs> so I'm not going to go back into the whole thing. Um, but so our project for today is a jewel loom project. And I don't want to exclude anybody from this because I realize that some of you are loomers and some of you are not loomers. And that's totally okay. But I also know that recently some of you back in December ended up with a jewel loom in your hands unexpectedly, right? And so you may or may not have one of these in your stash and you may not pick it up at all because you think seed beads are evil and they are the work of the devil and, and no seed beads allowed, right? But what I want to do is I want to show you guys how to use some bigger beads on this jewel loom um, for those of you who are not part of the jewel loom community, right? If you are interested in looming and you're in, in your, your, you're looking to be part of a community, the Jewel Loom Community Facebook group is an amazing place to start. Even if you haven't started looming yet, you can take a look at all of the inspiration that is there, all of the projects that are there, and kind of get an idea of what all is possible on the Jewel Loom and other looms, right? Obviously, I'm going to be um, talking about the Jewel Loom because this is a brand and a company that I work with. Um, However, there are a lot of looms in this line, right? In under Jewel Loom, there are a lot of looms. And maybe you've got one. Maybe you've got this one. Maybe you're thinking about getting one. Maybe you've got one that's a completely different brand. Just don't tell me. <laughs> but I want you to know that looming is way different than what I think you think it might be. We've done a ring project on this, and we did do it with seed beads. And I'm glad that I did that as kind of an introductory to the, the Jewel Loom. But what I wanted you to see more than anything was that you can use big beads on this and create some really cool bracelets. So we're gonna make a sparkly bracelet. I wanna show you these beads, you guys. So we're using rondelles and I've got gray, purple, and yellow. And originally all I had pulled out was the gray and the yellow because it's like the Pantone, right? But then I added the purple because I have it and it's sparkly and it's fun and why not? <laughs> so we're actually going to be using um, rondelles on the project today. And these are six by seven rondelles. You can use whatever ones you want. Okay. You can use any beads that you want to, but I'm going to show you this is a simple, simple bracelet. So other than bracelets though, you can make short components that you can use in larger pieces, right? So you can make strips that you can add to length for necklaces. You can make pendants, you can make rings, you can make earrings. You can make a whole world of things on the Jewel Loom. It doesn't just have to be seed bead bracelets, okay? So I'm kind of here to demystify that and maybe entice you to maybe try it out. If not, you're still going to get to see a fun project and hang out with us, right? All good. Easy peasy, pumpkin squeezy. No problems. All right, so let me roll back just a second. Check out. Um... Oh, yay. Marianne says, I bought a bunch of these in Michael's sales in a lot of colors. I love it. I love the Michael sales. <laughs> you guys, speaking of Michael sales, like if you spend enough money, I'm so an enabler. I'm so sorry. But if you spend enough money at Michael's, then they send you vouchers of free money. <laughs> I had a free voucher that was just about to expire and I bought a poster frame. It's a big beastie poster frame. I gotta find something to put in it. But yeah, I just couldn't resist. I ended up spending like $6 on a frame. 
It was like a $40 frame. Couldn't, couldn't miss that up. Couldn't, couldn't miss that up. Couldn't mess that up. All right. So let's get started with the project. Okay. I'm going to keep this as simple as possible. Enabler alert. <laughs> yes. I'm going to keep this as simple as possible. And we're going to make something just pretty, you guys. Okay. Let's do this. All right, getting you turned around. Hey guys, I, um, I'm going to do an updated tour of my workspace soon. Let me know if you're still interested in that. I know that um, Joan posted one that I had done a while ago, but I've really kind of reorganized and cleaned out quite a bit. So let me know if you're still interested in me doing kind of a studio tour and I'll clean up a little bit for you guys. <laughs> we'll plan to do that, okay? All right, so... Here are our rondelles, and this is a great opportunity to kind of adjust the light a little bit to kind of brighten everything up. But I just wanted to show you these. These are so pretty. They're so pretty. There's so much dust. Hold on. Sorry, you guys. So beautiful yellow, which I normally do not use, but I originally bought it to go with the gray, thinking about Pantone. And the purple is such a beautiful muted purple that I thought that it went really, really well with these. So our bracelet is gonna be exactly this, actually. We are going to do a three, three strand or three row bracelet, if you will, okay? And I'm gonna do it just like this. I'm not gonna do a pattern or anything complicated. I'm just gonna keep it straight and simple just like we've got here and we're going to actually use hemp as our warp so what are warps you might ask for those of you who do not know about a loom so when you create warps the warps are the threads that are going to go from top to bottom on your loom okay that's that's these guys these are going to create the rows and that's what your beads are gonna go in between. The weft is when you weave the beads in between those spaces, okay? So we'll get to that in just a second. So the original jewel loom comes with a rod. You have to place the rod into the tool, otherwise it's flat. So let me just show you. When you get it, it's just flat. It's flexible, but it's not bendable. So you have to be really, really careful. Stephanie says, I have bamboo cording, will that work? Yes, ma'am, it absolutely will. So you want to, you want to flex it to attach your rod into each one of the holes, okay? And I don't mean bend it and break it in half. I just mean you just barely, barely need to give it a good flex so that you can insert the rod here, okay? If you need more information on this, definitely, definitely check out the Jewel Loom website. Check out the Jewel Loom community group. Um, we really do go through this step by step. I'm just trying to keep things like as quick and simple as possible here, okay? And yes, this is the original loom. This is not the baby loom. So the baby loom is exactly like this with the exception of the rod and it is smaller. So with the baby loom, you make things like earrings, um, small sections of things, um, rings, but you can't get a full size bracelet unless you have a really, really small, small wrist, okay? Now, along the top and the bottom are these little ridges, these little grooves. This is where we're going to place our warping material. And as far as your warping material, you can use um, whatever you want. You can use things as small as your wildfire, which we're actually gonna use for our wefts, which is the going back and forth. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, you can use leather cord, you can use hemp, you can use cotton cord, you can use bamboo, you can use ribbon, you can use literally anything you want to, okay? And if it's bigger than the grooves, it will just sit on top of the grooves. So don't look at it and think, oh, I have to use something tiny. That's not necessarily true. You just, it will just sit on top of the grooves instead of down inside the groove, okay? So that is being said, we're using some hemp. I'm actually using some of the beetle on hemp. It's from the multicolor um, card. So it has like the natural color, it has a khaki kind of green color, a gray color, and a black. I've used all the black and almost all of the natural. We're going to use the gray because I feel like the gray really kind of disappears into our um, design. It matches pretty well. Okay, so I'm gonna come to the back here. On the back of your jewel loom, on both ends, you're gonna find there's a little button. And you can see how far it sits up, okay? The button is where you're going to attach your warp thread. So I'm just going to tie a loop 
and I'm actually going to start my loop out here and then place it over the button. Okay, so I'm just doing a surgeon's knot, taking my loop. I'm going to, whoops, I'm going to close my loop over, <laughs> over nothing apparently. Let's try that again, shall we? <laughs> Let me trim this off. That's funny. Okay, tie our little loop out here. This time, let's actually get it on the button before we pull it shut, shall we? All right, so we're gonna pull it over our loop, or over our button, rather, okay? Tighten that down. I'm gonna tie another knot. Tighten that down. And I'm gonna give it another knot just for good measure, okay? I want that really, really secure on that button. Also, I want you to notice where my knot is. Notice how my knot is coming up towards where my cord is. You don't want your, your knot to be down here for whatever reason. You know, maybe it, it got, you tied really tight to the button and it wants to stay down here and then your cord is up this way. Make sure that you rotate your knot around so that it is up here towards where your work is going because you wanna keep really even tension on your warps and if that if that knot wiggles from the bottom to the top it's going to take away some of the tension okay all right now one of the things i have to do before i start creating my warps is i have to figure out how many grooves i'm going to need to skip to accommodate my beads so you want your warps to be as big as the or as large as the, <coughs> excuse me, as large as the largest bead you're gonna use. So you want it to accommodate, if you're gonna be using large beads and small beads, make sure that your warps are large enough, or I'm sorry, wide enough to accommodate the largest bead in your design. So for ours, we're going to have to skip three grooves. And I can tell that by just sitting my bead up here next to the hemp, okay, and I can see there's it takes up the space of three grooves. So we're gonna skip three grooves and put our next warp in the fourth groove, okay? So I know that seems confusing if you've never done this before, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk you through it, okay? So to get started, I've got my cord coming up and it's placed between some grooves here, okay? And I'm gonna pull pretty tight and I'm gonna come down here to the bottom and find a groove that's pretty close to where the other one was like in relation, right? I don't wanna come over here or anything. I do wanna to try to keep it straight, okay? Place it in a groove. I'm gonna come back here to the bot or to the back, to the button, wrap my cord around the button, and then I'm gonna take my cord back up here to the grooves. Now remember, we need to skip three grooves. One, two, three, and place our cord into the fourth groove, okay? And then we're gonna take it all the way up Skip three grooves, one, two, three, and put it in the fourth. Now, before I commit to this, I do want to bring my bead back up here and just double check to make sure there's gonna be enough room. And you know what? It looks like it's gonna be a little tight. So I'm actually going to, I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna skip more than three grooves and I'm actually gonna make it four. That's why I didn't, I didn't commit to that just yet, okay? So again, back around the button. Now I'm gonna come back up here, whoops, to the front. Okay, and this time I'm gonna skip four grooves because I don't want it to be too tight. So I've got one, two, three, four, and put my hemp in the fifth groove. Back up here to the top. One, two, three, four, put it in the fifth groove. Okay, now that space is gonna accommodate that bead. Okay, come to the back, wrap around your button, come back up here to the top, same thing, one, two, three, four, put it in the fifth. I'm gonna do three rows of beads, so I need four of these warp threads, okay? So depending on how many, how many beads you're gonna use, you need one more warp thread than the number of beads going across, right? So there's two. And this will be three, okay? Place it. In there now I've got three rows so my beads will fit right in between those spaces now I need to secure my warp thread so I'm coming to the back I'm gonna take that hemp or whatever you're using and wrap up around the button a few times that's just gonna hold that tension these need to be tight it needs to make that kind of guitar sound. That's how tight you need to keep these don't let them be droopy and 
you know, and don't have any tension on them or your, your design will fall apart. So definitely keep that tension. And in order to tie a knot back here, wrapping around the button a few times means that I don't have to worry that as I'm tying the knot, I'm gonna lose any of that, that tension that I've built up, okay? So now I'm gonna do an error knot out here. Again, it's just around the button, but I kind of pull it away from the button to loop my end through, right? Just like that and pull, okay? Get that nice and tight. So now I can, I definitely can let go because I've got one really good knot. Now I like to wrap around my, um, my warps back here to create another kind of half hitch knot and pull. I just do that a couple of times. You just wanna be sure that everything is nice and tight, okay? And it doesn't matter where or how. You just, you know, whatever works for you to get everything nice and tight. All right, now we're flipping back over to the front. We've got nice tension here on all of our warps. Now we need to remove the rod. To remove the rod, you do have to flex the loom just a little bit and to keep my cord from jumping out of the grooves, I like to put my finger up here, okay, and hold them in place. I take the bottom of the loom, which you can't see, but I hold it up against my body and then I flex and you see how when I flex, it makes my, makes my warps loose. I gotta flex it just enough to get that rod out, okay? Now we have even more tension. When we take the rod away, it really lets the, the loom expand a little bit more and that gives your, your warps even more tension in them, okay? Tightness is the name of the game when it comes to making anything on your looms, okay? All right, so we've got the setup. Setup is good to go. We're ready to start adding our beads to create our bracelet. So, I've got my beads out. I'm gonna go ahead and take them off of the strands that they are on and get them ready to go. Now, when you're working with the loom, you're gonna be working from left to right. And for those of you who are right-handed, it's a little awkward at first, right? But you, you gotta do it. That's just kind of the way it goes. <laughs> Always working left to right. Okay, so getting all the beads ready to go. Okay, now <coughs> you do have to have a needle for this. I'm using a jewel loom needle. You can use this regular beading needle if you want to, but the jewel loom needles, needles are really cool because they take up the entire working area of the loom. So just imagine if you were using the tiniest seed beads and you wanted to fill up the entire area here, you could fill up the entire needle as you're working, which is pretty cool. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so for my weft, the weft is the, the actual looming part that goes back and forth, okay? I'm gonna be using wildfire. Um, you can use wildfire, you can use any of your favorite weaving threads for this, but I do recommend that you use something thin, particularly if you're using beads that have a smaller hull. So if you've made your warps out of leather, unless you're using great big, big hull beads, you're not gonna be able to use leather to go back and forth to create your wefts, right? You're gonna have to use something smaller. I'm using the gray wildfire because it, it really is going to just kind of disappear into my project. I'm going to get a long length of this out. I usually work with about five feet of this. Um, you can work with smaller sections if that's too much for you, but you need to um, take into account that you'll probably have to add more thread later, okay? Now, <clears throat> I'm going to thread my needle, and a little trick for using the wildfire and threading your needle, if you'll take your pliers... And if you will just smash the end of the wildfire, it has that coating on it and it'll flatten out. And that makes it really, really easy to thread your needle. Whoops, if I could see, that'd be good too. <laughs> it also helps if you can see what you're doing. All right, so we thread our needle Pull just a little bit. We're not doubling our thread or anything like that. We're just giving ourselves a little bit of a tail here, okay? Now, we need to anchor our cord, or our thread, rather, to our 
warps. And so in order to do that, I'm just going to create what is called selvage. And I'm just gonna go back and forth two times, okay? Working over here on the left side, working left to right, I'm gonna go under the first warp, over the second, let me hold this up so you can see, under the third, and over the fourth, okay? So that's what my needle's doing. Under, over, under, over, okay? I'm gonna pull, and I'm gonna pull my thread, leave myself about six to eight inches of a tail, okay? Now I'm gonna go back the other direction with my needle, under, over, under, over, okay? And pull. No beads here. All we're doing is just anchoring our thread to our warps so that we don't pull it off as we're working, okay? Now we're ready to actually start adding some beads to this. And we're gonna, again, be working left to right, and we're gonna be going underneath the loom, okay? So what you wanna do is you wanna take your needle and pick up your beads. So I'm gonna pick up three of our rondelles, okay? I'm gonna take my needle and my thread underneath the warps, underneath, okay? From left to right. I'm gonna take my hand, I'm gonna grab those beads, hold them underneath and pull my needle and my thread, okay? So I'm pulling out the slack, right? And as I pull out the slack, now I wanna take my index finger and pop those beads up into the spaces where they belong, okay? and I'm gonna hold them there with my finger. Now remember, we were underneath, so our thread was running underneath the warps, right? It's underneath the warps, even though our beads are up here in the middle. Um, yeah, I'm using, as far as the size, I'm using .008 of the gray. I like the .008, it's just a little bit bigger than the .006. I feel like it's a little bit more sturdy. Marcy, don't ever apologize, my friend. Questions are good. Don't ever apologize for asking questions. Ever, ever, ever. No reason to be sorry. All right, now, since we were underneath the warps, now we're gonna go back through these beads and we wanna go over the top of the warps. And it's really easy to make sure that we do that because we're gonna be able to see our needle. So I'm gonna go back through these beads, but I'm going left, or I'm going right to left and I'm passing over the top of the warps. And you can tell because you can see the metal of my needle over the top of those warps, right? So what we're doing is we're kind of creating a little bit of a sandwich with our wildfire. So it's running under, the, um, the warp is running between, and then the wildfire is running over the top, right? That's what's gonna help to hold our beads in place. And then when you pull out the slack, your beads will stay. And that is all there is to it. It's just a matter of working up the rhythm. So you go under, add your beads, and over, right? And we're just gonna repeat that pattern. So I'm gonna pick up three more beads. Okay, here are our beads. From left to right, I'm going underneath all of the warps. I'm gonna pull my thread, my needle and my thread, push them up here into the, where they belong, right? And now I'm gonna go back through the same beads, this time from right to left, going over the top of the warp. And I know I'm going over the top because I can see the little hints of metal of my needle in between those beads. Can you work off the spool of the wildfire? Um, you know, I, 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 I guess you could. The only issue is that um, it's not really anchored. So I guess you could use like a clip, you know, around your, the clip that comes with it, kind of. Uh, I've never done it. I always just cut a length. I've never worked off the spool. But you're welcome to try. I'm sure that it's possible. I don't know why it wouldn't be. I don't, I don't imagine that there's any reason why you can't. <laughs> All right, so we've got two rows all ready, ready, okay? And then we're just gonna keep going, okay? That's really all there is to it. The hard part of all of this is really not hard, but it's more time consuming, and that's just the setup, right? The setup part takes a while. All right, underneath, 
pull my needle in my thread. I can tell I'm definitely gonna run out of thread for this, so you guys are gonna see me add thread. Okay, push my beads up where they belong. Taking my needle. Oh my gosh, Wanda. <laughs> my needle and I'm gonna go from right to left over the top of those warps okay <laughs> and pull and that's gonna keep our beads in place okay and that's it we're just working up a little bit of a pattern now you can see how okay just for a second if we only did one row how it looks like those big long wrap bracelets you can totally make these on your loom, right? It's just a single, you could just do a single row, but it's still, it's the same thing. So it's, you know, if you love those wrap bracelets, which I absolutely adore, this is a really cool tool to use to make those. Oh, Rosanna, I hope you feel better. Get well soon, my friend. All right, pushing those up in there. Okay, and now we're going from left to, or I'm sorry, right to left, back through. <laughs> Betty, Betty says she's an angel. I know better. <laughs> Don't trust her. She's telling a fib right now. <laughs> All right, get a yellow, gray, and purple. So I'm not really using much of a pattern you know, you can make whatever pattern you want to. I'm just keeping my colors in a straight row. Going underneath, pulling out the slack, popping my beads into place, holding them there with my finger. And now I'm gonna take my needle and go back through those beads, this time going over the top of the warps. <laughs> and pull. And I'm pulling very secure, okay? I'm not like, I'm not really tugging on it crazy hard, but I am pulling so that you can see the wildfire is sitting right up against the warp. There's no extra wiggle room there, okay? Just be mindful of all of those little things, okay? So we're just gonna keep going. And because we're using large beads, uh, entire bracelet, you can work this up pretty quickly. Okay, underneath, push the beads up into the spots where they go. Take your needle right to left, back through the exact same beads. But this time that, that wildfire is gonna be over the top of the warps. Uh-oh, I've made a loop around some of my cords here. Okay, and then just keep going. So you want to, um, Make sure that you take into consideration how you're going to finish your piece. So when you're using smaller beads like seed beads, you have several options. Um, you can use um, some ribbon clamps or ribbon clamp, crimps, ribbon ends. They come, it's all the same thing, but they can be called any number of things. Um, or you can use a slide clasp and the slide clasp actually goes over your beads. So when you're using the larger beads though, you do have to kind of consider how you're gonna finish off your bracelet, um, how you're gonna tie your ends. So for ours, we're gonna use a button and I need to take that measurement kind of into consideration. So I need to be sure that, you know, I make the body of my bracelet minus about an inch to an inch and a half for your button and your, your loops. I'll show you how to do all of that, but just keep that in mind when you are making your bracelet. If you need a seven and a half inch bracelet, don't do seven and a half inches worth of beads because you're gonna end up with like an eight to an eight and a half inch bracelet. Um, so definitely be mindful of that as you're going. You wanna be sure, whoops, I put those on the wrong order. You wanna be sure that you're giving yourself enough room And using a button is really super, super easy. That's why I picked it. Not only is it really easy, but I really like the way that it looks too. All right, underneath, putting my beads where they go. Back through the same beads and pull. 
okay? Underneath with your needle and thread, put your beads up into the space where they belong. Hold them there with your finger. Take your needle right to left over, left over the top of the warps. And you'll know if you haven't gone over the top of the warps because your beads will fall out. <laughs> there won't be any question about it. You won't have to look back at it and go, well, did I really get over the top? You'll know because once you get your needle back over to the other side, the beads will fall out. So there's no question about it. <clears throat> okay. I love using buttons too, Catherine. I feel like it's such an easy, an easy clasp and they're so easy to put on. You know, you don't have to fight with hardware and opening and closing and hey, can you help me put my jewelry on? <laughs> with a button, I can do it myself, which I really like. <laughs> All right, so we're working this up pretty quickly. I am going kind of slow just because I want you guys to get the steps, you know. Um, but if I were not teaching this, just because, of course, I've had a lot of practice at this. But, um, you know, I can I can work up a bracelet with large beads like this in, you know, 30 minutes start to finish. Don't expect to be able to do it that fast in the beginning just because the setup kind of can be tricky, right? You can um, use, instead of fire line, that was the question, instead of fire line or wildfire, you can use um, 1G, you can use NIMO. Um, what is the other one? We were talking about it the other day. I can't remember the name of it, but any of your little, your, your thin, you know, your fine threads are going to work. Um, I do recommend playing around with it a little bit because some of them are stronger than others. That's why I always choose the wildfire because it's very, very um, sturdy, even though it is thin. Um, the Nymo, I don't ever use it. It's very frustrating for me to use, but I know other people who absolutely love it. So definitely try it. The name of the game when it comes to the weft, remember that's the going back and forth here, um, to picking the right size for the weft is making sure that number one, it's gonna fit through your beads more than once because you've got to pass through them at the very least twice. And that doesn't include reinforcing everything. Um, so you need to be able to pass it back and forth through your beads a few times. And also you need to know how it is that you are going to finish it off. Um, so you're going to have to be able to hide your knots and hide your, you know, your ends. And so things with leather, you're not really going to be able to hide those things. That's going to just have to be part of your design. So you have to kind of take that into consideration as well. It's really easy to hide your very thin threads, um, whereas your thicker threads, they have to kind of stick out on the edges and be, you know, you can put beads on them and make them, you know, part of the design itself. But if you don't want all of that extra, then I definitely recommend going with something really, really small. Um, everybody asks me about the monofilaments like Supple Max or Fishing Line. And the answer to that is um, I, I personally do not like to use Supple Max or monofilament, the clear threads, the plastics um, on my loom. I find that the, the knots don't hold very well. They're kind of bulky. Um, I definitely do not recommend using it to make warps. It is just not strong enough. Um, but now as far as your weft is concerned, you're, you can try it if you want to. Um, I just have not ever had very good luck with it on the loom personally. But that's just me. That's just me. You may use it and love it and, you know, and it works every time for you. But I've, I've not, never had very good luck with that. It's really just a matter of kind of playing around with things because the sky is really the limit and you're going to get different looks depending on what you choose, right? Whatever you, you're going to use, you're going to get kind of a different, a different end result. Okay. So speaking of end results, let's see, I'm going to, 
Oh, I don't have a bracelet over here to measure up against. Just use our ruler and find out what we've got here. So we've got five inches so far. I'm going to go another... I want to give it an, at least one more inch of beads, and then I'm going to show you guys how to finish this off, okay? I'm running very short on cord or on thread, so we're going to have to talk about the reinforcing, but we may not necessarily do the reinforcing part because I don't have enough thread. <laughs> I'll have to go back through with another piece of thread at the end on my own. I won't make you guys sit here forever for that. Okay. Okay, going underneath, pull, place my beads up where they belong. Okay, take the needle back through those beads, right to left. Okay. And I'm going to do one more row. Whoops. If I can pick, pick up the beads, I will. All right. Last one. So going underneath. And my needle back through. All right. So that's going to be our last bit of beads. Okay. Now, normally at this point, I would take my needle and thread and I would run it back through, whoops, I would run it back through the entire piece to reinforce it, meaning that I would follow the same path of my thread all the way from the bottom back up to the top. That would give me extra thread running through the entire piece. But because I don't have a lot of extra th thread left over, um, we're just going to reinforce this bottom row and the top row, okay? So to reinforce, you can see my needle is coming and my thread are coming out over here on um, the left, okay? And it's coming over the top of the warps. I'm going to take my needle, I'm going to push my beads down with my finger and I'm going to take my needle underneath the warps, and come out over here on the other side. So I'm just gonna pass back and forth a few times, okay? So now I'm over here on the right, I'm gonna go back to the left, this time I'm going over the top of the warps, right? And pull, and now I'm gonna go back from left to right and I'm going underneath, so I'm pushing the beads down, okay? I wanna go underneath the warps, so I shouldn't be able to see my needle until it comes out the other side over here. And it's a little tricky. There we go, okay. Now while I'm over here, before I pass back through to the other side, I'm actually gonna take my needle and my thread and I'm gonna create a half hitch loop on this outer warp. So I'm just making a loop taking my needle through the loop and pulling down. So I'm just tying a little knot right on the edge of that warp, okay, on the outer warp. And now I'm gonna take my needle and go back through one more time, just to help to pull that knot into that last bead. Give it a tug, okay? And now I'm gonna trim off. Actually, I'm gonna burn mine off because I'm gonna use my wildfire cord cutter. I'm just gonna zap the end of that cord right off, okay? And for me later, because I really do want to reinforce the entire thing, I will come back with another um, length of thread and I will reinforce the entire thing, which I definitely recommend doing for larger pieces like bracelets. But because I didn't have enough, we're just going to leave it as is. So it definitely is a, um, a matter of do as I say, not necessarily as I do. But we need to reinforce this top row as well. So remember where we anchored our thread? I'm going to pull that out and we're going to put a needle on the end okay and reinforce the, the very top row just like we reinforced the bottom row same thing I'm going to make a couple of passes tie a knot and then singe it off okay so just back and forth a few times
gonna go ahead and tie my knot right here on the outer warp. Okay. And take my needle back through one last time. Give it a tug to pull that knot into that bead and then take this off. And then we'll we'll bring in the measuring. We'll bring in the ruler to see how how long this ended up being. Okay. So the beaded section looks like we are uh, right at six inches of the beaded section. So this is gonna be a pretty small bracelet for me, um, but remember inch to inch and a half for your clasp. So that's gonna be right about what I'm looking for, okay? Okay, but now we gotta do that part. So to do that part, we gotta take this off of the loom, okay? So I'm gonna come to the back and I'm gonna grab some scissors. Um, let's see here. Are you reweaving from the end of the project back to the beginning? I would, yes, I normally would. I did not have enough cord to do that, or I did not have enough thread to do that. So I will reinforce it and go in and out of every row afterwards. Um, but yes, normally before you take this off of the loom, you need to reinforce the entire piece, okay? And go back and forth through all of your beads again. I just didn't have enough thread to do that. All right, so I'm gonna cut, and I wanna cut close to my button because I need as much of this cord, this hemp, as possible to create our loops for our closure. So notice how I've left this nice and long. Don't cut this right up next to your beads. You won't have anything to work with. You gotta be sure you leave yourself plenty, okay? All right, so now we're free from the loom. We have our, gosh, that's gonna be pretty. All right now we have to create a closure for this. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use a button. I've got a two hole wooden button here. And the first thing I want to do is I need to tie my warps together. Okay. On both ends. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one and two and I'm gonna tie those together. Now you can do an overhanded knot if you want to. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take them together and do like the loop through knot. You see what I mean? And then I'm gonna pull that knot down pretty close to my beads. Okay. Just like that, okay? Now I'm gonna do the same thing with these two. Okay. And I'm gonna bring the knot down pretty close here. Just like so, okay? So we've secured those ends now we wanna come over here to the other side and do the exact same thing. Now you, you may see that one end is a little bit shorter than the other, that's okay, but you still wanna be sure you've got plenty, okay? So same thing. Okay, and then I'm gonna do these two. So now I know for sure my beads are not gonna come off. Now we just gotta figure out how to add our button and it's really, really super easy. And guys, this is just one of a million ways you can do this, okay? I'm just showing you the really super easy way to do this. So down here on the end where I have a little extra, I'm gonna take my button Okay, I'm gonna take my two threads from one section and go through my button. And actually, you know what? I was thinking I might tie a knot first, but I don't, I don't wanna tie a knot first. So you can just come in and then tie these two together. But maybe that's what I'll do. It do you don't have to do it this way. 
right? You don't have to tie them together to gather them up if you don't want to. Um, but I think I will. I think I will. Okay, now I'm going to separate them out. Two of them are going to go through one hole on the button, and the other two are going to go through the other. And so I'm coming to the front of the button with them. And then I'm going to tie another knot and just kind of trim off. That's going to attach our button. You can use a shank style button for this. Um, you would just run your cords through the back of the shank instead of through the buttonholes, right? All right, so there's that. Now I'm just going to tie my ends together again. Just another kind of loop through. They're getting a little short on me, so it takes a little bit of patience here. That's why I normally don't do this knot right here because it does it takes up a lot of the cord to do that. Now if I can coax those ends, I'm gonna even use my pliers here to pull those ends. All right, there's all four. Bring that down, tighten up each one of the individual strands here, okay? And then you can come and cut these off. You can leave them as long as you want to, but I do like to kind of leave them. They're fun, right? Okay, so now what I need to do is I need a loop down here on the other end so that my button has something to hold on to. So come down here and just test it out, right, to see. So I'll bundle my cords together and figure out like where I need that knot to be that's gonna still be able to pass over my button, right? And then you just wanna do the same thing, just tie an overhanded knot down here. Just make sure that you're leaving enough room for that button. And the good thing is, is that you don't have to commit to it until you get it right. Is that gonna be enough? Yep. So now I'm just gonna pull the ends, tighten that up. And again, you can trim off if you want to. Right, and now, ta-da, you're done. Now, I realize not everybody's gonna like the button and no, not everybody's gonna like the little doot doots that hang on the ends here that's very boho looking and some people won't like that. Um, but you can use a shank style button and hide all of these things and then you can actually trim them so close to the knot and add a little bit of glue that you won't ever see that. Um, so that's a possibility as well. Um, or you can, Finish everything off with, you know, some selvage and a different clasp if you want to. Um, I'm just really partial to the buttons because, like I said, they're so easy to get on and off. I don't have to fight with them, right? You just slide your button through your loop. Doot doots. <laughs> yeah, little doot doots. And there you go. How pretty is that? Right, and then I've got the funky fun. Like, if you don't like the funky fun, trim it off, right? Put some glue on it and call it a day. Or leave it long and add some beads to it and you've got some really cool fringe, you know? But all in all, you've got a really cool fun bracelet. And it looks very much like, a, you know, a triple wrap, those wrap style bracelets. And honestly, it, you know, nobody would know the difference until you, you know, until you told them, hey, I did that on a loom, I didn't. You know, I didn't freehand that. The loom makes it so much easier because it pulls all of your your threads nice and tight for you, you know? Cool, yay, I'm glad you guys are liking it. I'm gonna turn you around. And we're going to, what was the word that she used? Um, what did she call it? Not chat, but... She called it something. It wasn't rambling. I don't remember what it was. I was going to be snarky, but I guess I better not. <laughs> We're going to chat some more, okay? <laughs> but there you go. You can see, right? And normally, guys, I would not do yellow. I just am not. I'm just not a yellow person. But with the gray and the purple like that, I think it turned
turned out really pretty. I also think it has a lot to do with the, um, <laughs> that, that sparkle to them too. So I'm going to go back through and reinforce this just to strengthen it up, which you can do off of the loom. It is a little bit trickier to do it off of the loom. So I, that's why I definitely recommend doing the reinforcing while it is on the loom. I just find that it's easier to get your needle back and forth through there several times. Um, but you know, if you're like me and you ran out of thread, you can always do it later. Just, you know, be patient because it, it does take a little bit longer to get back through when it isn't attached. But there are the results, right? Your button can be any, any button you want. You can use any beads you want. It does not have to be seed beads, guys. Do not look at the loom and think it's just made for seed beads because it totally isn't. You can use whatever you want to, right? anything the sky is totally the limit yeah donna says it's pantone-ish it totally is that's why i picked the gray and the yellow and then i just added the purple because i just couldn't commit to the gray and the yellow <laughs> i had to do more you know you know me gray and yellow just kind of seemed very ho-hum so i had to put that pop of purple in there all right let's see i'm gonna scroll back because i think i saw a question here um Amy says, is the 0 .006 wildfire too small? It isn't, but I feel like the 0 .008 is a little bit sturdier when it comes to using bigger beads. But honestly, if you reinforce it, it's strong. It's going to work. Don't feel like you need to go out and buy different, you know, wildfire if you if all you've got is the 0 .006. I'm not saying that at all. You can use what you've got. Um, did you say you got the beads at Michael's? Lori, I, didn't, I actually didn't say where... Um, my words were not pretty when you said what whoever said. <laughs> um, the, the beads actually did not come from Michael's. The beads, I actually got these from Bargain Bead Box. I'm like all over Bargain Bead Box right now. Um, these were re these, they're, they weren't, they weren't reorders, meaning they weren't in a kit, but they were for sale over on their website. I don't know if they still got these or not. Right. Um, let's see. So bargain bead box is the subscription, but then when you subscribe, you have access to bead box bargains, which is just the same words in a different order and you can buy beads. So I ordered these from the site. I think they were like a dollar. <laughs> I mean, like they were, and you know, I can't pass up sparkle, but it was a while ago. So I don't know if they've still got these on the website or not, but doesn't hurt to go and look and see, right? Wendy says, can you use Nymo? You absolutely can use Nymo. It is not one that I like to use um, just because I have a love-hate relationship with it. I love that it comes in colors, but I hate the way it tangles. <laughs> but other people absolutely adore Nymo and it works really, really well on the loom. It's, it's particularly if you are used to using it, you will have no problems whatsoever with it. So, all right, guys, if you're interested in getting a jewel loom or you're interested in getting some cool beads to use on your jewel loom or any of your projects, guys, I have an affiliate link with jewel loom. It's posted here. Joan has it marked. Um, you can also find it in the information on the Sarah Ellis Designs Facebook page. You can also get it um, in the community website group. If you are not a part of that community website, please come and hang out with us. Um, we do a lot of chat <laughs> and we're not mad about it either. <laughs> I'm not bitter. <laughs> anyway, yeah, come hang out with us, right? Come hang out with us. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh, tomorrow. Tomorrow is Feel Good Friday. So that means... Feel Good Friday, easy peasy, fun, beautiful jewelry. So be sure to come hang out with us tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern for Feel Good Friday. I don't know what the Feel Good Friday project is going to be yet, but I know it's something that you'll enjoy. And there might be kits. I don't know. We'll have to see how the rest of my afternoon goes. That's the plan, though. So we'll see how it goes. In the meantime, guys, have a wonderful rest of the afternoon. If you've got questions, don't hesitate to reach out and ask. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.